and we're singing. We're singing. Dun, dun, we're singing. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Uh, how are you? Oh, I'm so good. Great. So, oh. um, I'm so glad that you were able to come up to my lab. Are you? Um, yes. I fixed you a little gifty. I got <gasps> you a gift. Oh my god! Yeah, it's not even my birthday. I know, but I care about you and etc. Wow. So, this little ring. Do you oh. see this glowy <gasps> ring? Oh my god! Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm so glad you like so it. So pretty. It's gorgeous. And do you hear that hum? Hum. Yeah, that's a little upsetting it's a new sort of well okay so no one in the world has a ring like this in mm-hmm. this whole world mm. i promise there's not one person wearing a ring like okay this. so this is okay just it's a promise for me singular to yes no person you cannot be in this world and wear this ring okay okay it's a promise so i why i was thinking is i made you this ring and it's really special and i thought that you might want to try it on because i felt like it would bring out the color of your teeth I- to be honest here it feels like you're being a little pushy and like what? with this like vibrating sound that's coming out of it like i, I just like not feeling super comfortable but if it um, makes you happy i would put it on okay well first of all you're comfortable vacuuming which is also humming okay? huh i just like to point that out and you're comfortable okay. giving hummers which doesn't it's necessarily different though it's very different that's true why don't here's a here's where we'll meet in the middle why don't you put the ring on oh it's not it's not sized to my finger Sadly. But here, just slip it on your finger. Just put the fucking ring on, Morgan. (gasps) Welcome back to another episode of Beauty and the Bitch. I am Professor Magician Mick. Wow, that is absolutely how you should introduce (laughs) Like, you should never change that. Please, when you move to your new home and you make your new friends, let that be how they know you. (laughs) Let it be so. (laughs) Professor Magician! (laughs) Uh, and I'm just, uh, more, and I'm just a basic bitch. I yeah, ain't just got bitch. nothing. Well, you would be a basic bitch with an enchanted ring on her finger, Which but for some reason. Which is all I ever wanted. Well, amen to that. Mm-hmm. Today we're talking about The Magician's Nephew, which is the second to last book publishing order in the a Chronicles of Narnia. solid story. It is really good. A solid story. Um, before we start doing our research and, you know, all the stuff that we do, how did you feel about this in all the Narnia books? Does it stand out to you? Yeah, as a child? it's one of the more memorable ones. Um, I remember <clears throat> not really prequels were like new when you're like a kid, right? Like mm. um you have this like timeline of events or whatever, and like something like a magician's nephew being dropped so late in the game was like a new concept. And I have to yes. tell you, I didn't get it. It, like it was hard for me to be like and then the story went on and then all these things happened and oh, mind blown it's this person and you thought you knew but you had no idea it's a lot for a kid it is a lot it's a lot it is a lot and it was i mean it's not like he's a first person to ever write a prequel but it was pretty innovative for like 50s era children's literature totally but um as an adult looking back on it, like it has some of the more iconic Narnia things mm-hmm. um, as far as the whole series goes. And it has a lot of those really foundational fantasy elements that we see told time and time again or like repurposed. Completely. Um, so I like it. I like it too. Yeah. I think it's a really classic fantasy tale and it could stand alone. I mean, it doesn't, but it could. Totally. Um, so The Magician's Nephew came out in 1955, and as you said, Morgie, it was a prequel. So it is set 40 years before The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, The Magician's Nephew is around 1900, and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe happened in the 1940s during Mm -hmm. World War II. Yep, yep. So, uh... I guess we're, we're going to spoil this because we're going to talk about the whole... We do that with every Narnia book. But this is one that I feel like maybe people haven't read recently. If you don't want spoilers for this book, if you're like, I'm going to reread it soon, I would say just pause this episode now because it yeah. is worth a reread. Pause it it's and good. go and rate and review us five stars because you love us. And yeah. then just pop back in on the next epi. That's right. Just mm-hmm. come on back in. Um, but essentially, The Magician's Nephew is the story of the 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 founding the creation of narnia mm-hmm. which happens pretty late in the game as there's a lot of story before that oh there sure yeah, is yeah. well and you know what i thought morgie because the story the plot's so good in this book instead of doing like a minute recap or a five minute recap i thought maybe we could like role play this story okay. i mean if you're okay with that i just finished rereading it so it's still very bright in my mind great okay and there are two protagonists and they're like best friends 
Okay. Yeah. So we'll just have to, you know, pretend with that. And they're children, like we are at heart. Yes, yes. Well, I'm technically only 17, you know. Yeah. I mean, and I'm 29 and a half forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, okay, so now first you have to decide, Morgan, who you want to be. Okay. I'll go all in on being a Polly. You're going to be Polly? Yeah. Okay, well, Polly is like, she's like Jill from the Silver Chair, but nicer. Yeah, and she's also, pretty banging. Sarah has a cat named Polly, and I That's really like true. her. That's yeah. true. I love that cat, sweet Polly. Uh, okay, so Jill is mannerly, smart, and kind, so you're really going to have to act, Morgan. Mm, you mean Polly? Uh, Polly. You're yes. really going to have to act, Polly. Okay, well, I will do my best. Okay. And also, just so you know, you hate Jadis, who we'll meet yes. right off the bat. Yeah. And you hate her forever. Nothing Man, changes. and that is so like me. It is like you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true That's a true characteristic right there. And then I'm going to play Diggory, who is, I would say, more likable than Peter. And he might have mm. some anger problems. But otherwise, he is like the best guy ever to go to Narnia. Good in dude. All the He's dude. like a good yeah. person. And spoiler alert, he grows up to be the professor from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Is that how you do it? Yes. Dun, 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 dun. He's a very important person. He is important, and he's a sweetheart. Okay, so Morgan, I want you to imagine we're both like 12 years old. Me and Polly. I'm Diggory, you're Polly. Hanging okay? out. Yes, and we're next door neighbors. Oh, hey, girl. Oh, my God. And I told you last week, it's kind of a secret, my mom's dying in my bedroom. R.I.P. I know. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Thank you so much. But it like bonds us together because you yeah. feel bad for me. And totally. Whatever. And so, uh, Morgan, you tell me that uh, we are going to go up to your attic. Yes, okay. let's go into my attic. Yes. Come with me. And it's this really special thing mm. where your attic joins up to my attic and all the other attics in the row of houses. And, that's like, what? that's confusing, but I'm sure that's a real thing that happened in British homes. I am, ma- yes, in British homes. Also probably, like, in, like, like brownstones yeah. in Brooklyn or whatever. That's crazy, right? Yeah. That, there's so much adventure to be had. As a child, yeah. uh, right off the bat, I was like, oh, this is awesome. adventure. Yeah, I can go in other people's attics. I'm down. Okay. So, Morgan, once we get up to the attic, I want you to tell me, okay? Okay. Like, uh, what are we doing up there? Let's just, like, run amok okay. and, like, just, oh my just God. let Having ourselves so into fun. people's homes. Like, okay. it doesn't matter. Like Open those shit. doors. Let's live our lives. Yes. Well, I'm getting a phone call. Ooh, probably from a robot. A, yeah, it does look like a robot. Dear Mick, we are <laughs> calling you. Actually, John, right? That's what yeah. they'll call you. Dear the robots. John. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, fuck robots, though. They're not part of the story. So we're (laughs) running amok. We're running amok. And do you remember I told you, Polly, about that house down at the end of our row that no one lives in? Oh, yeah. It's because it's haunted. (gasps) True or not true, you want to sneak in there Let's go there immediately. Okay. Uh, By the way, have you met my uncle who I live with? Mm, What's his name? His name is Uncle Andrew, and he's a piece of work. Sounds weird, but go on. He's a weirdo. Mm -hmm. He's a big weirdo. So I have to tell you, so he talks to himself. I'm pretty sure he's crazy. My Aunt Letty doesn't like him, and that's her, that's her husband. Sign. Yeah, yeah. And he lives up near the attic in our house, okay? Cool, So cool, let's cool, just cool, be real cool. quiet when we're going over this portion. I like it. we think it is or whatever. Sure. Okay, so um, okay, so we got there to this empty house, this haunted house. Uh, who goes through the door first? Me. Wrong! It's always me. Okay, uh, well, you then. It doesn't really matter, and it's often you, actually, yeah. <laughs> you're the best, Polly. You're, like, the sweetest. So, we drop down together into this room, and we see a fireplace and a wingback chair, and we see this little velvet platter that's got these rings on it. Mm, I love rings. Okay, so that's true to form. Yeah. Polly, you love a ring. Mm-hmm. You do it in the book and in real life mm-hmm. here. But guess who gets up out that chair? <gasps> Uncle Andrew. Girl, <gasps> how'd you know? How did you know? I'm a predictress. Okay, because you are. So it turns out Uncle Andrew's an amateur magician. And he Like made you do. Things. I mean, who isn't? <laughs> right? Who is also an amateur the phrase, magician? Like, amateur magician. I think it's very different from today's amateur magician. Sure, yeah. And what an Uncle Andrew yeah. is. Well, it's no professor magician. Right. Of That's so true. <laughs> um, okay, so Uncle Andrew done hopped out of his chair and he's walking toward us and we're scared. He mostly ain't me. Mm-hmm. You don't know how crazy he is, but I've seen him be crazy me at time. And then Polly, he offers you one of the rings. I'm like, give it to me. Yeah. And you just reach your greedy hand out. What you do? I touch it. You take it. I mean, and why not? Guess what happens to you, Polly, when you touch that ring? Bye. Girl, you disappear. She gone. This is like we're living in some South American country in the 80s. She gone, girl. Disappeared. Mm. 
Okay, so Jessica Flynn, is that her name? Gone Girl? Oh, Gillian. Gillian Flynn. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, so now, Polly, you done up and disappeared. Well, that's upsetting for you. Now I'm locked in my creepy uncle's study. Sorry, that happened. He's trying to force a ring upon me. They always do. Girl, they want to make a proper. I guess so. Oh, my God. That's a Michael <laughs> Jackson right there. I see what you did. <laughs> Um, so now Morgan, or I'm sorry, Polly, I don't know who Morgan is. <laughs> Me Some bitch I knew once. She's Wait, probably dead. Okay, what? We'll talk about that Never later. mind. Okay, sorry. Cross the line. So Polly, guess what Uncle Andrew Dunn told me after he, he disappeared? Say? He taped okay. that ring on. These rings transport your ass. You know this actually before I do, I mm-hmm. guess, because you go there. Transport you to some other world. Dope. Just so you're just floating out in the universe somewhere. It seems like not a great thing for him to do to children, but um, okay. Yeah, he's a verified piece of shit, <laughs> is what he is. Yeah, and then you know what he does to me? He says, well, you know, it's fine. Because he's like, go after her. And I'm like, girl, I'm afraid, mm, you know. Fair, you're Being bad diggory, yep. living that diggory life. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, well, it's fine. We can just abandon her in this other world. Tight, tight. And I'm like, girl, I can't abandon Polly. That's my one and only friend. Yeah, you would be sad and bored. Yes. Really bored. Extremely bored. And our love is not romantic, but it's still real. Very real. Yeah. Yeah. So I take the other ring to go save you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm a hero. Come on. Okay, we are. Now we're hanging out because I took your ring. And I'm scared. Yeah, do you know where we are? Uh, We're in between. You got that right. We're in some kind of woods. And there are these little pools of water. We not know campers, and we don't swim well. Uh-uh. And you know what? I'm tired. Mm, same. I'm very tired. And you're half asleep over there. Your eyes Girl. barely open. Polly, get your ass up. It's a lot. It is a lot. And there's something about this place that makes me so tired. Right? You know? Okay, but, okay, so we come to ourselves, and we, like, overcome. And here's what I'm asking you now, Polly. Okay. We're in this place. Uncle Andrew sent us on this crazy-ass scientific magic experiment. And for us to become professor magicians, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that we should explore around here a little bit, don't oh, you? Because like we've got magic rings, and it seems to me like in this little like in between world where we're at, pause. In between world shows up in the magicians. Yeah. Right? We we're talking about yes, this earlier. Yes. And you said you hadn't remembered the it was in this book originally. That's yes. What they called it. Like at the library's there too, right? Uh-huh, in the magicians. Yeah. Yeah. By, but there's um, also like Lev Grossman. All those portals or whatever. Yeah. Great. It's mm-hmm. so just an homage to this. It absolutely. Yeah. Modernized, but very much the same mm-hmm. way that you jump through a pool, you go into a different world. Anyway, so I'm thinking, me Diggory, living this Diggory life. That we should go explore some of these other worlds. How I do you feel? You. I feel like you're okay, okay with that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go in this one. Okay, great. Okay, okay. So uh, we make some mistakes with our rings. We don't have to go into it. It's embarrassing. And then we find ourselves in this place called Charn. I don't love the name, but I'm willing Girl. to explore. You know what? I'm gonna be straight up with you, Polly. I don't love the name either. And you know what? I'm noticing about this world. It's kind of gross and dilapidated. Yeah. And there ain't nobody alive breathing no breath. I ain't see no bug. I ain't see no skug. I ain't see no bear. I ain't see no deer. Mm. I ain't see no rhino. I ain't see no people. I ain't see no trees. Wow. Girl. Let's go. (laughs) Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. This world is actually my sex life. Oh, made no! Into a, made into a land. But it's fine. Let's explore it. So, like, we... Uh, you know, girl, what all we passed? We passed a bunch of ruins. Yeah, there's lots of rocks. We had passed... Oh, we, we had seen the sun. And the sun was gigantic and red and looked old and tired like you do right now. Oh, my God, I am, though. Oh, I was just kidding. It also looks swollen. Same <laughs> Um, And then... Do you remember what happened next, Polly? Uh, statues? So wrong. So <laughs> wrong. No, no, no. You're close. You're close, Polly. Your memory's not great, but it's not horrible. It wasn't just statues. It was that they call it was like the Hall of Images is what I, living my diggory life, have been calling it. And it's like wax figurines. Weird. Really. Don't like it. Yeah, no. it's strange. I'm a hard no. And it's like this whole long hallway full of these wax people. And at first they look really nice. And then they start to look really mean. Mm. And then they start to look really sad. And then there is this bitch on the end. Ooh, girl. Do you remember? Yes. Girl. Now, when I Diggory saw her, I was like, ooh, Diggory likes. Well, I'm an excellent judge of character. And how do you feel about it? I like her. I don't need her. I don't want her. 
Is it because her face looked cruel and proud, but also beautiful? That might be one reason. I think Polly might be jealous. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You heard me. Okay, well, Polly, did you notice that little bell on that little table in the middle of all those wax people? You think we should ring it? No! You don't think about it? Actually, I think we should, yeah. <laughs> because there's a little poem that says, if you don't ring this bell... It's going to drive you crazy, wondering what would have happened mm. had you don't rung this bell. I think we better do it. Which, by the way, another very memorable part of mm-hmm. this book. And one that, as a child, I was like, yeah, that would drive me crazy. Right? Like, that's a legit curse, actually. Okay, so, look, we don't have to go into it, but I decide I'm going to ring the bell, and then you try to stop me, and then I grab your arm, and I bruise your arm. I may have broken the bone off your your wrist yeah once or twice yeah yeah once or twice could have uh-huh. happened in real life too once um but it was an accident both times i didn't mean to he doesn't and know his own strength i don't know my own strength i'm a beast and also i had to ring this bell obviously Polly. and you're obviously. trying to stop me and i want to know what's happening i'm already going mad okay so girl when i had rung this bell a lot of bad things happened. Yeah, there. cats thought that it was like feeding time and they all, all the cats. All the cats. Feral cats roam our streets. Facts. Facts. No, well, it started this ringing sound and that made like half the world fall down Which because is it was like a certain vibration. So weird. Yeah. Like build better buildings. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. why I'm saying you almost got crushed. <laughs> And I'm upset because it was just almost, you know. Almost dying's funny. Yeah, it is. It's an adventure. I love it. And then guess who gets up from that that line of wax figurines? This little bitch. Uh, What, you? Oh, no, you mean her. (laughs) I got confused. Uh, Yeah. This old woman on the end. Mm. The one who I think's pretty, but you're not so sold on. Yeah, yeah, Jadis. That's her name. Isn't that also the name of the girl from The Walking Dead that plays like yes. she invented that language? Yeah, she's that's like, that is the most people bullshit crash. people I have ever seen in any show, and I mean, so stupid. Trash people fight good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay <laughs> how did they? Jadis. How did they regress in like a year to girl. like almost? They're like barely. I like can't barely with verbal. These people. I know I it's cannot. embarrassing. Um. So Jadis pops her fucking ass up and pause. This is the White Witch, obviously. Obviously. We're seeing the beginning of the White Witch. So we find out, Morgan, Jadis, girl, the powers this bitch has. So first of all, she killed everybody in her land, her whole world. Rude. Yeah, she knows this word called the deplorable word. Yep. I think it's faggot. And (laughs) (laughs) No, I don't know what word it is. I mean, happily. Do you think one of two things happened? He couldn't think of a good enough word or secondly... (laughs) He was just like, the thing he thought of was so bad, children weren't ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at that point, it's probably like interracial marriage or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah basically. <laughs> anyway. No, well, he doesn't want people to know the deplorable word, because if you know the word, then you can kill everyone on earth except I, yourself. I really want to say it, though. <laughs> I really do. I just feel like called <laughs> to do it. I feel like that came from the death. That was such a true emotion that you just gave rise to. Wow. It was real. You were like, I want to kill all y'all. I just, Genocide. Yeah. Apocalypse. It's like when you're holding a baby and you're like, all you can think about is like, what if I drop this baby yeah. on its head or something horrible? I would have to say this word. So you I'm know, glad we don't know it. I've never thought that Morgan. You're wow. sick. No. All people are the same. We all think these I, horrible things. No, I do. No, I think about that while driving and while watching live theater both. Those are actually two most. Yeah, when like, I'm what like, she just a herself? jerk of my hand, I could just end everything. Not that, not in a suicidal scary way, but just. The power is The possibility. Yeah. yeah. And then on stage, I'm like, I got to fuck this shit up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I could really Directors, fuck are you listening? <laughs> but I never do. Open casting call. Yeah. <laughs> so Jadis knows this deplorable word, which is why her land is completely devoid of life. Such a bitch. Mm-hmm. Horrible. But she's also super tall. The bitch is like eight feet tall. She's half giant, half gin. Like genie. Yeah. Like what? She's half giant, and half the... genie. Oh. Because... Genies, according to at least C.S. Lewis mythology, but also perhaps Christian mythology, they are the children of Lilith, the first wife of Adam, mother of demons. Wait, what? Yes, what? yes. It's literally, it all connects. Jadis is of the line of Lilith, the mother of demons yeah. from Christian mythology. Yeah, it's yeah. Fascinating. Very cool. Mm-hmm. She's essentially Lilith too. You know, I mean, she's just very. She's evil personified, honestly. Um, Dope. And the reason she uses the deplorable word is because she and her sister are in a civil war 
and her sister wins and all Jadis has left. Literally, her sister's like walking up to her throne room to declare victory and then Jadis says the deplorable word. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. And then she puts herself in stasis for who knows how many years long waiting for someone to ring that bell to wake her ass up. (sighs) Yes. So she's got a lot of power. She can turn things to dust just with a word. I guess it's the deplorable word just used. I don't know. I don't know, but she has... She's got yeah. something. Yeah, and plus she's super strong. And tall. But she is, she's very tall and gorgeous, which, hey, is a power. That's a lot going We for both her. know that. It's a responsibility. Basically. With great power comes come. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Guzzling. Um, okay, so that's Jadis. And then you remember how it is. Like, Jadis doesn't even talk to you. She didn't even see you because she found out I rang the bell. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then... She can tell a weak man when she sees one. I guess she can, but let me tell you what. Look, gay or straight, I am very vulnerable to the power of divas. Yes, I love a powerful woman. Do. And honestly, if I met Jace in real life, I probably would be just like Diggory. Frankly, I would worship her, and then I'd be like, oh, damn, she's so evil, but she's so charismatic. Mm-hmm. And that's what she is. Mm-hmm. So she tricks us, and we get back to the world, between worlds, in the wood. And then we accidentally take her with us to London. Now, I blame you, because she has hold of your hair when we leave, uh, what's the name of this world? Charn. I feel like, first of all, it is my fault, and I'll just have a bob cut forever. Oh, yeah. and a broken wrist. Uh, yeah, what can you do? You're all bruised up. I, I, evidently, I don't know my own strength, because I messed you up in this book. He's strong. Okay. He's strong. Okay, so look, girl. You remember? Now we're back, and Uncle Andrew's fucking... Lab attic study. This magician ass little hoe. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And look what we done brought him. A fucking queen witch from a dead planet. You're welcome. Yeah. And uh then essentially, I don't know how you feel, but I was like, well, Uncle Andrew, it's all you boo. <laughs> Cause we have done our part. <laughs> Twice over. Oh, uh, it's really basically like the least he deserves. Like, yeah, this should be his problem now. Well, but here, well, here's the thing though: is we know he's a fucking idiot, mm-hmm. and now this queen witch bitch from a dead world mm-hmm. has done. She's loose in London, yeah, in the 1900s no less. It's like when they took the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park to the mainland. Like shit is Girl. getting real. Exactly. Like, trust no one. Exactly. No, and it don't matter whose fault it was because it's all our problem. It's, now, it's already happened. Right? Yeah. So, girl, I know you had to get home. Because your parents were like, where the fuck is Polly? Which, right? fair, right? I mean, fair, yeah. you've been gone for, actually, not that long, because Narnia time, human but time, still. but still. I'm we hungry. were in that attic for a minute, though, mm. you know. Um, and, uh, you know, shit goes down. I go visit my mom. She's still dying. Yeah, it's nothing's sad. changed there. Yeah. I don't know nothing about your life. Tell me about your life, Polly. Oh, you know, I'm just like... I was like, hey, my mom was like, I made you muffins. And I was like, bitch, I only like cupcakes and a back slapper. That's right. And then I went to my room and I played my Pokemon cards. And then... <laughs> you're like, you're... all of these are 100% facts and you cannot deny them. It all happened no in the book. C.S. Lewis wrote it down. Yeah. You know? um... Send the appendices. <laughs> <laughs> Polly's essentially like the 1900s version of that cash me outside girl. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Cash me outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. She's pretty head. Uh, pretty. Um, so yeah, whatever. You go, you go to bed without dinner, and I get in trouble. And then eventually, old Jadis comes back with Uncle Andrew. And girl, let me tell you, it's shenanigans. Mm-hmm. It's madness. Tell us. Well, she rides around the corner of our street, first of all. Not in a cab, but on a cab. This little scrub ass. It has a horse drawn cab. Yeah, she's standing on the roof. Okay, girl. Driving the horses. So extra. Yes, too much. And then she crashes the cab. The horse is fine, but the cab's destroyed. She's drunk. Uh huh. Probably. Something's wrong with her. Mm-hmm. If if we had basalts back in the day, I'd say the bitch was on basalts. Yep. She jumps, flips off the cab, lands on her feet, and the entire time she's screaming about how she's queen of the world now. Tight. Which, let me tell you, I've tried that. It don't work that way. You mm-hmm. can't just say, I'm queen of blank, and then you are queen. Right? It worked Unless, for Elizabeth, though. Well, some of us are just queens. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. And then she pulls a piece of a lamppost off, and is like, she just pulls it off. With, that's how strong this bitch is. Mm-hmm. It's like butter. Mm-hmm. Like, you know how you might snap an asparagus sock in half? She did that with this lamppost. With this lamppost. 
host. That's a that's a lady who works out. My queen. Mm-hmm. And then Uncle Andrew, he done you you didn't see this part. I don't think you were out of your apartment yet, but because everybody's out. I mean, this bitch is causing a ruckus. Right. This witch bitch. And then Uncle Andrew totters out the broken cab and his fucking top hat pushed down over his face. He looks a goddamn mess. Yep. Which he looked like from the beginning. And then the cabbie whose cab was stolen, he comes up and he's trying to calm down the horse because Jess at this point is on the horse's back and the horse is freaking the fuck out. Right. Evidently, she also knows how to make a horse go crazy with fear because she whispers something in its ear. She knows all the good words. Yeah, and she must have whispered that in my ear around age 25 or so because I got hit with a lot of fear, but that's neither here nor there. (laughs) Okay, and so then, remember, Polly, at this point, I'm coming around one side trying to get hold of her ankle because my thought is, and I know you're with me on this because we talked about it there in the crowd. Well, you tell me, what was my thought? (laughs) You was like, let's get this bitch and uh, let's send her back to the nether realms. Any realm but here. Anywhere. Any realm's a realm. Yeah. Any realm's a... I try to do any holes of gold. It doesn't work with realm. Anyway, she, she's got to she's go. She's got to go. She's got to go. Well, <laughs> coinkadink. <laughs> you know, coinkadink this time around. The minute I grabbed her heel... I don't remember exactly. It happened very quickly. But somehow, you, the horse, Uncle Andrew, me... And Jadis all ended up in the world between worlds. We were all touching somehow. What about that lamppost? She still got it in her hand. Mm, bringing yeah. that shit along. Yeah. She hit a police officer in the head with it. He she went was. down like a sack yeah. of bricks. And Girl. Now he's dead. Well, do blue lives matter? <laughs> no, because blue isn't a life. It's a choice. That's neither here nor there. We're talking about 1900. We're also not sure what color he was wearing. Let's not pigeonhole. Yeah, he was definitely a Bobby. This officer. So, yeah, Bobbies are not like American. No, but also probably is it asshole. true they don't even carry guns they have those like uh what are those sticks. batons yeah. yeah wiffle sticks and nope. they've got they've called. got um, bobby stick bobby they, stick that's how night stick actually. night stick yeah yeah but they like to put little um like uh, uh pom-poms and tassels on the end Aww. so that they can spin it with their hand and then they like to pull up their little rainbow hats mm-hmm. and they march through the crowd and they sing little songs england's a magical place I don't... That's how they do it over there. I think at one point you went from reality into fantasy, but I'm not sure where. <laughs> I no, can't really That was pinpoint. all just facts. That was all facts? Yeah. Well, sounds great. Yeah. Well, anyway, back... Speaking of magical places. Mm. So, look. Here's the thing. Uncle Andrew doesn't like the forest between worlds. The wood between worlds. And Well, Jadis, he doesn't like Uncle Andrew. Well, who does? No one. Literally not even his wife. Mm-hmm. Okay? By the way, when J.S. was in town, she threw Aunt Letty through the air in the parlor and threw her against a wall. It's just really rude. Yeah, Aunt Letty's like a tiny, like wizened old woman. And had she not fallen on the mattress, she would have broke every bone in her body. Jadis is a dick. Jadis is a fucking dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, look, here's the thing. We try to just push those stupid assholes into another pool. But look, they grab a hold of us. Things happen. Things go down. All of a sudden, girl, you remember, Mm. it's me and you. Diggory and Polly, plus all these fucking assholes. Mm, our entourage, go yeah. on. And we were trying to throw that stupid bitch back into Charn. Right. Girl, I don't know what had happened to mm. Charn, but this pool we dropped into, there ain't nothing here. Just desolate. Black. It's a look. It's a it's, look. It's, 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 you know, a hole would be something. This is nothing. It's like a really weird experience. It is. It's odd. But I'm happy, sort of. Well, you know, it, but you remember a guy even weirder, though. Yeah. Yeah, and you probably got happier. Because then we started to hear that song. Oh, and I love music. Yeah. Yeah, and you're very talented. Would oh. you like to sing a bar of the song that it was we like, It was like, it was like, this land is your land. This land is my land. From California to this desolate hole Narnia. on the ground. <laughs> Um, okay, so it didn't sound anything like that, but uh, okay, well, good that's try. Debatable. Probably. I think it was more like, oh, that's like the sound whale that music. Make, I think. Yeah. It, well, okay, so here's the thing. So pause. So like, Aslan, who we see in like moments in our retelling, Aslan is like singing this world into existence. Yeah, right? He's a diva. What does it say? I they he tries to explain the music like. When each element comes out, it's like a different sound. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's a sound for the sun. It's big and brassy. And, like, the stars are, like, wispy and soft and tinkly and all Mm -hmm. this stuff. But, like, I just can't imagine what it sounds like coming out of a lion's mouth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. As a child, I was like, I just can't imagine. I don't know. 
I, I'm not saying C.S. Lewis could um, better, and he's a failure, but I am saying and I couldn't really grasp it's it. It's weird, listeners, because uh, Mickey is really musically inclined. Uh, you guys might know that he played the baritone yes. in the high school Here, band. I'll give you a good impression. One, two, three, four. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I mean, that bass tone is key. Hey, it's key, you know baby. what? It was the note. It was the <laughs> note. Uh, uh, no, I'm not musically inclined at all. But I'm just saying. Okay, so it's me and you. We see this lion singing in the darkness. Suddenly weird. a sun comes up. Suddenly rocks submerge and trees are growing super fast. Now, and... I, as not a super religious person, sure. am really inclined to just love a creation story, though. So I find it to be a very moving scene. And or metaphor. One hundred percent, I do too. And I actually think it is the most perfect way for Aslan to make Narnia somehow singing. It's very appropriate. Like it, I don't know. It just it it fits. It works. I just wish there had been some. Like I don't know. Does Aslan sound like a pipe organ? Does he sound like a full orchestra? Ooh. Does it sound like a human voice? Is it more like a roar? It's actually just is a bagpipe. Like it's just when he opens his mouth, just bagpipes <laughs> come out. <laughs> That's when you were creating That's bitch. what happened to Mr. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to be a man, but He's like, he's not quite right, but you like it anyway? <laughs> You're like, okay, let's go. Well, I guess the answer really is Aslan's all of the above. Right? Yes, all, all of those. Music, but. Okay, so, you know, as you said at the time, oh my God, that lion's coming closer to us. Right? right? Like, that seems not good. No, we were all as scared. Mm-hmm. And me, you, Jadis, the horse, everybody. The cabbie. Jadis needs to chill. Mr. Frank. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Name? Frank, yeah. Frank. Um, and you remember, Jadis takes that, she has that length of iron. Right. And she throws it. And he hits that lion right between the eyes. Rude. And remember what happens? Uh, he was like, owl, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, why would he say owl, bitch, if he's a lion? That's number one. <laughs> number two, no, the exact same thing. He didn't even notice. Girl, he don't go faster. He don't go slower. He don't bleed. He don't cry. He don't That's meow. That's savage. Nothing. That's savage. Like, yeah, you're said, so insignificant. You're it me. mattered not. Yeah. It's like every day when you try to talk to me and I just whiz right past. On my way to make another million. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's a joke because I don't make any money. Wealth in our (laughs) lives is hysterical. Oh, we're very privileged, though, in a way. Okay. So, girl, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, but I Mm -hmm. still remember. Jada's done ran the fuck off. Wouldn't you, though? I was. I thought it was pretty funny. I was like, this tall, beautiful, scary woman. It's a good moment to exit. She scurred. Mm-hmm. And then, that's when Aslan starts calling what up out of the ground? American Girl dolls. <laughs> Just little Rebecca's, little Becky's, little Britney's, little Ashley's, little Molly dolls. <laughs> Crawling out of the cabbage patch. And here's the problem. And killing people. Here's the problem. Yeah, all that's true. Yeah, American Girl slash Cabot Patch Dolls reanimated zombie style. And here's my problem with it. Yeah, the Chucky plagiarized that shit. Well, I was Straight just going to... No, off. here's the thing, Queen. Mm-hmm. Every one of those dolls is white. Mm. And that's what's wrong with America. Hello, goodbye. You're done. Yeah. No, but so actually what happens, Morgan... Oh, tell me more. Is that animals burst up out of the ground. Oh. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, he sings all the animals out. And then he goes around touching two of every kind. Uh, you've mm. heard that before? Two by two? Yeah, that's stupid. But it's in the Quran, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, is that in the Quran? I don't know. It's all the same. Because I've heard that every world religion has a great flood. Or pretty much. A first world widespread. I don't know. It doesn't Must matter. be true, then. If I'm not reading the Bible, I promise you my ass ain't in the Quran. <laughs> Girl, I mean, let's just be straight up about it. I ain't reading nothing. Anyway, so, okay. All these animals pop out of the ground, and then Aslan goes by and breathes on them. They become talking animals, okay? And then around this time, I am like, hey, my mama's still sick Could at you home. breathe on her? Yeah, or do something for her. Is this the land of youth I've heard about? Is there an apple I can get? And okay, long story short, Aslan blames everything on me and nothing on you. Uh, that seems accurate. Um, you know, it's inaccurate because you know who should be getting all the blame? Fucking scraggly ass Uncle Andrew. 
That's who should be getting all the blame. He was literally the absolute worst. He's the worst. Yeah. It's all his fault. Yeah. And literally not my fault. I'm 12 years old, but Aslan definitely blamed me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Aslan comes for these kids. Well, I did hit the bell when I was hurting your, you did, your wrist. Yeah, you did. I did do that, but it was a spell. Aslan says, real life, uh, take a break from the roleplay. Aslan said that uh, that shit was not real and that he was pretending. But no, girl, I think that really was a curse. Mm-hmm. And whatever. I mean, who am I to go against Aslan? One, he doesn't exist. Two, he's a lie. And three, he's Jesus. So I guess <laughs> I guess I'll think of, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, you know, I shouldn't argue with him. But I was just like, girl, no, I think that's a real spell. Jaius is also a witch. So like, and interesting thing about Jaius is she has power over men. She does not have over women. Right. None of the women fall prey to her. Mm-hmm. All of the men. Because we smart. Well, yeah, I think we so. Smart. Well, I also think it's sex and gender-based magic yeah. in a way. Yeah. Like, her beauty is such a big part of her, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Aslan, you didn't hear this because he pulled me aside for this, but he was like, you fucked it up. Mm. You brought evil into Narnia not two goddamn seconds. <laughs> After I literally breathe life into yeah. this world. Yeah, like really? Yeah, I you, just cleaned these floors. You literally like from conception were like, and we'll sprinkle a little darkness. Yeah, literally you were a mistake. Your parents don't want you. But also balance. Yeah, but also balance. Yeah. So Aslan was like, you know what? Look here, girl. If you want... You can go out and you can find this apple. There's this apple growing out on this tree. Mm. And it's the apple of youth. And if you bring it back here to me, we'll talk about next steps. And at that point, I was, you know, like, hey, by the way, my mother is dying. Can I have that apple for her? And you know what Ezlin said to me? He said no. He said, you know what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I said, Aslan, that's not an answer. He said, rawr. Oh, catty ass motherfucker. I know. This fucking. Anyway, so me, you, and the horse who now has wings. He's a Pegasus now. Naturally. Well, Aslan did that for him. His name was Strawberry, but now his name is something else. Skygar, something I remember. Yeah, Skygar. You changed his name. Sure. We all go out and we fly on this horse and you know where we fly is essentially the land that Jill and Eustace traverse in the silver chair this land is your land this, this land, land is, is my land, land. Pop, 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 that's how they do it over there yeah they get the drum line involved <laughs> I'm exhausted no, I was really drunk I'm yeah. literally sweating Woo, he worked Woo. out girl um, so look here's the thing we find the tree it's got a garden. I'm sorry, I'm done with the roleplay. It's got a garden around it. They go in. There's a phoenix guard in the tree. Diggory takes an apple. Right. Then he turns around. Guess who the fuck's behind him? Asleen. It's no. <laughs> a good guess, though. Asleen? <laughs> Uh, no, it's fucking Jadis. This bitch. It's Jadis She again. will not quit. She will not stop. Yeah, but she only comes out when Aslan's not around. Girl, she afraid of Aslan. Oh, That's the truth. She's smart. She's not stupid. She, when she threw that bar at him, by the way, that bar she threw at him, when it fell into the ground, mm-hmm. it took root uh-huh. and grew and became the lantern, yes, we know, from the line, the witch in the wardrobe. Oh. Because yeah. the, because the land's just been created, so it's like super fertile. Yeah. Like along the way, they plant, um, they have toffees, Jill, or, um, Polly has toffees in her pocket, and they plant one. The next day, it's a toffee tree. So I need one of those in my yard. Well, it really just sounds right like now. a fig tree. Because they're like, they're not actually toffees. They're a fruit that tastes like toffee. And I was like, girl, I think you're talking about fig. Mm. But it's whatever. Whatever. Nobody asked me. It's fine. Anyway, so uh, look. A diggory done turned around living his diggory life. Mm-hmm. And the witch is behind him. And she's not messing with him because she done ate one of those apples. This little bitch. Ooh, supposed to be the apple of knowledge. Well, no, it was supposed to be the apple of youth, mm-hmm. but seems like the apple of knowledge to me. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. So here's what happened. First of all, I think it's such an interesting detail. On the outside, these apples are like the most beautiful red apples we ever saw, but the the juice, the inside of it is dark. So she has like dark stuff all around her mouth. Gross. I know. She looks a mess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, and then she turns even paler. It's like mm. they say white as salt. Alabaster. And in that moment is when she becomes immortal. Mm. But it's also when she becomes cursed. Because if you eat one of those apples, there's like a sign or something. I forget how we find this out. But if you eat one of those apples when you haven't been by to eat one of those apples, mm. then you get what you want. But like the genies or whatever, your fondest desire is also your greatest curse. 
Totally. And so she wants to live forever, but she lives forever miserably mm. in the northern wastes. And uh, anyway, so that's how she becomes immortal, which, by the way, tracks back to me saying... I don't think she dies in The Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe mm-hmm. because that is deep magic, girl. Which also tracks back to, like, girl, let's go get some apples. <gasps> whoop, 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 whoop. Um, okay, yep. in that moment, I don't know, would you be tempted to eat it? Um, Me as, like, a tiny child person, I well, would probably not. But, you but if I was, like, an adult person. There's a reason that adults in Narnia, yeah. Yeah, I might be like, uh-huh. this is an interesting turn uh-huh. of opportunity. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I mean, it's supposed to be a temptation. That's the whole thing, right? Religious temptation. Yeah. And it is. I would be very tempted to be immortal. And also to be like pale, so <laughs> so pale that like you 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 could be called like an ice queen. Yeah. Like oh, if yeah. I'm gonna be pale, I might as well be like that kind of pale. And that's important because, you know, I was uh, looking at clips on YouTube. Do you remember in this most recent Disney remake of Lion Witch in the Wardrobe? Mm-hmm. In the battle, uh, the one where the final battle of the movie, Jadis is wearing Aslan's. Um, What's this thing called? His hair? His mane. She's wearing his mane around her. She's no longer... I didn't even realize until watching this. I've seen it. Wow. Who knows how many... It's horrible looking. And she's wearing that like gold headpiece thing. I don't remember, but that sounds intense. Well, it's fascinating because, you know, it's essentially... It's kind of like Jadis Light. We're getting to see her as Jadis almost, is what I realized. Because, you know, when she's in Charn, it's all rich robes and like beautiful jewelry because she was queen of the world before she killed everybody. And she's not rich in the same way when she's fighting Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, but we see her without the ice and the paleness. Yeah. But that all comes from this moment when she eats the apple of youth, is when she goes from, like, I would almost think of her a red witch to a white witch. Mm-hmm. Right? Also, though, on this topic, you know, we've talked earlier about, okay, is the Witch of the Green Kirtle the same person as right. Jadis, right? right. Um, and, I, you know, my head cans yes, even though it seems like maybe no. It does seem, though, that if Jadis is partly genie and partly giant she could definitely have sex with the giant and have children totally so i now i'm leaning towards i still want the same i still want what's her name to play it if and when they film it i still want tilswin to play all these roles personally but seems like the lady of the green curl might definitely be a child Mm -hmm. she seems a lot weaker than jadis too yeah yeah so i don't know anyway so my my theory has evolved fascinating isn't it plus if you're immortal you're gonna just be you probably gonna be going around procreating with like whatever living your life mm-hmm. making babies dumping babies moving on yeah. you're a white witch you ain't got time to be a mama i also learned that you know all those people in her army lying witch in the wardrobe mm-hmm. it likely she made slash birthed all those things birth she them. is literally the mother of demons within narnia so all those things there's very little way for them to exist except through her she should go by Daenerys she should mother Mother of of demons demons. got a ring Uh uh-huh so anyway to finish it up Diggory is tempted by the witch to eat an apple himself or take it back to his mom but he says no and he he actually gets real sassy he's kind of essentially like fuck you you bitch (laughs) and then he runs and they hop on the horse so the last we see of Jadis is she's just going north right and the reason she's going north is because when they get back to Aslan, Aslan's like, okay, we plant this apple. Bloop, plant that apple. And then this tree suddenly grows. And this is a tree you wouldn't even know about unless you go deep into Narnia like literature because mm-hmm. it's called the Tree of Protection, right? So it's obviously in the lineage. It's like the, the next descendant of the Tree of um, Youth or Life. And it protects Narnia until the White Witch invades. So for like 900 years Dang. or something. And the only reason she's finally able to invade is because the tree dies Aww. somehow. Maybe she kills it. We don't know. We never see. But, um, so that's like a random thing that you wouldn't even know is there. It's a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah. And a similar again, I mean, look, we talked about the similarity between this and Lord of the Rings, and you were mentioning it earlier. Yeah. You know, Tolkien also had trees of light and shit. Mm-hmm. Trees of protection. Gone Very similar. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then, you know what? And then Aslan says, you know what? Since you were so good. He's a good boy. You get an apple for your mama. Oh, and here's yeah. an apple for you. And you get an apple. And everyone, you get everyone, an apple. Everyone, everyone, yeah. So, uh, so long story short, Diggory goes back home. He feeds his mama the apple. His mama gets better. It's a sweet ending. Yeah. 
Diggory and Polly grow up. They always stay friends, but never fuck. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I love that because, you yeah. know, so often. We've yeah. even seen Narnia. They put them together, even if they're Erebus and fucking Shasta, who don't yeah. go together. Yeah. And uh, then uh, they plant their rings in Diggory's backyard. They, like, bury them. Um, Uncle Andrew becomes senile over time and much nicer after his brush with oh there's a lot of shit we didn't cover with him they think he's a tree the talking animals think he's a tree and they try to bury him and he does this thing where he decides that he can't understand the animals which I thought was very powerful because you can fool yourself into being stupider than you are Mm -hmm. like I think that's a wisdom thing you can do that if you keep pretending to be stupid you will become stupid this explains so much yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and Diggory plants the core after his mom eats the apple in that backyard. And I bet you ate up. the whole apple. Girl, she's she hungry. Nom nom nom. <laughs> yeah, she had. I think cancer is what she has. Um, and they don't really say, but it seems like cancer. They call it the white waste. Do they call it that? No, that's but just what I call my waste. They call some shit some stupid stuff back in the day, day. They sure did. Bubonic plague. What a stupid name. Girl, you got the bird flu. <laughs> Um, and then, so here's my favorite part. So we know that Diggory becomes a professor. That tree, the core that he plants, grows very fast, though not as fast as in Narnia, because Earth is not a magical place. Grows up to be a tree with the most beautiful apples in all of London. About 40 years later, there's a huge storm, and the tree falls down. So sad. Uh-huh. The deep cut is, it falls pretty much around the time when the Tree of Protection dies in Narnia. So they're wow. obviously connected. Time is a construct. Uh-huh. And then, what do you think old Diggory, Professor Magician, makes out of that tree? A large bonfire. You're right. <laughs> a really big one. He burns it up, the magic's dead, and the story <laughs> never happens. Great. <laughs> no, he makes a beautiful furniture piece. He does. Reminds yes. me of another story I once heard. Uh, get out of the closet? Yeah, no, the secret garden. Yeah, oh, secret yeah, 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 yeah. The swing, that's what he makes. Yep, 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 swing. Yep, yep. No, he makes the wardrobe, obviously. <gasps> what? He makes the wardrobe. And that's why the wardrobe is magic. Yeah, I love it. There are so many moments like that. Do this. you think that he had any and all of that origin story planned when he wrote Lion? No, So what a not at great all. retcon. Like, what a beautiful backstory to write mm-hmm. after the fact. It's really brilliant because, no, he wrote each book as if there would be nothing after it. Yeah. Even Lion, which was, it was written as a standalone, you know? And then people kept wanting more. So, no, I, that was one of my big questions. Do you think he would have written it differently had he known it was going to be seven books long? I don't know. I mean... I don't know. I think he did a great job with this prequel. I think The Horse and His Boy, I think, would be different had he known. Mm. Because that's written as like a weird one-off almost. Yeah. And I think The Last Battle, which we haven't gotten to yet, which I'm currently reading, so we'll talk about it next week. I think that would be different. Mm. I hope that would be different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think he could do a much better job than this because he really retconned so beautifully. He did. Um, And a lot of the stories are mostly disconnected right Mm. like the different individual books Mm -hmm. and like this one ties in so neatly to the most iconic book in the series the lion the witch and the wardrobe that it feels more important somehow Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. it is more important in the history of narnia because it's literally the creation of narnia Mm -hmm. but like it just it feels much more powerful because it's so connected to that story i think i agree yeah well that's actually um Okay, so first of all, as far as the reading order, Mm. like reading The Magician's Nephew first, because it's chronologically first, even though in the publishing order it's sixth out Mm. of seven. So I just want you to know, because I didn't know this, HarperCollins came up with that. And they came up with that in 1994. Came up with it as the first in the reading order? Yeah. Yeah, they just put that shit upon us? Yeah, because it's just chronological. Yeah. You know, um, I I want to say no. Yeah. (laughs) I want to say, and here's why. First reason why is because The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, like Harry Potter number one, uh, Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone, it's written for younger children. Yeah. It may not be as obvious in Narnia, but it ages just like Harry Potter does. Sure, sure. And this book is very dark. Yeah. I mean, we meet a bunch of real villains, uh, see a bunch of villainy. There's a violence in this book that's pretty unique. And also, Diggory's mom is dying. 
Mm-hmm. So, like, all around, it's just, like, I wouldn't... I would read this to a younger child, but I'd much rather read them Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe. I, I think they'll like it a lot more. Sure. You know? And I also think, like, there are so many good, like, so many, like, bombshell things and just, like, really good information. Mm. It's kind of like if you watched the original Star Wars movies, like, if you had seen the first one knowing that Darth Vader was Luke's dad, Mm. it takes away, like, a piece of the magic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's much better that you learn that crucial piece of information after the fact. Like, it's much more powerful that way, and I think the magician's nephew is better placed later in the series to take you back to the beginning, you know? Yeah, and you really rob yourself of that if you... I mean, like, if this is the first one that you read then the wardrobe being something won't matter to you at all. Probably. And then the very next book you read is literally about that wardrobe. It's just too pads. Yeah. There's a, there's a magic. I mean, that's maybe not the most precise word, but there's a magic to this order. And actually that leads into my plug for this week, which oh, is great. a, it's a weird plug. It's not a thing. It's more a way. Are you plugging butt plugs? <laughs> I'm plugging a lifestyle centered on <laughs> No, um, I have this thing that I do when I watch stuff that I know is weird. Okay, I know this is strange. But if I'm watching an established show that I know is supposed to be good, what I often do is I start with season two, and I watch all the way to the end, whatever's out, and then I go back and watch season one. Hmm. I know this is weird. I've polled people. Nobody thinks this is a good idea. But let me tell you why this works for me, okay? First, this is best for, like, binging a show that's already fully done. So you know exactly how long it is, and you have some idea whether it gets real shitty at some point or whatever. But if you start with season two and then go back and watch season one, you kind of engineer into your binging the feeling that the magician's nephew gives you. Interesting. Right? Yeah, because you go back to season one, and which normally, let's be honest, this is another reason. Season one's normally the worst season. Not always. But often. Yeah. Because the writing's shaky, the characterization's iffy. They don't have the iffy. same budget either, They don't have the same usually. budget. They don't know what's going to hit yet, so mm-hmm. they don't know who to go forward with, really. Yeah. So, like... Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, I did this with uh, Parks and Rec, um, oh, uh, yeah, that's Brooklyn a, Nine-Nine. Season 2 is a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Community. Hmm. Um, uh, tons. Actually, all these, like humorous sitcoms I do this every time interesting and it has never once let me down I cried watching season one of Parks and Rec it was so powerful in a way that actually unless you watch it that way you're never gonna have that experience with season one well maybe you will I can't say that but this is a thing that I have never thought of to do but when you say it with those specific shows that you say I think it makes sense for the the shows that you say. And, like, what a fascinating thing to think about. I Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. will consider this. Oh, consider also, at the beginning of season two of almost every show, you know what they give you? A recap. A recap of season one. You're not going to be lost. So, I'm just Um, putting it out there. Consider it. I call it start with number two. I'll come up with something better later. Got it. Have you ever done that thing where you read the last page of a book first and then decide if you want to read the book or some shit? Mm -hmm. No, I don't do that because um, I'm afraid of it being spoiled. Yeah, because sometimes like, last plays. A lot of me. times. Yeah. yeah, those people are monsters. I think we can all agree. I don't. Oh, monsters! No, those people are insane. Um, I've heard people like if there's a dog, they'll like read the end to see if the dog dies. I've heard that people do that. I'm like, girl, go home, John Wick ass motherfucker. I do like John Wick. I don't even read the back covers of books anymore. Yeah, because they tell you too much. Yes, the Scarlet Letter. I've told you this before because we were in the same class, but we had to read the Scarlet Letter in high school. Now, is that a good book? No. Did I enjoy it? No. I might have enjoyed it a bit more, though, if the back didn't tell you who the fucking dad was, Uh which is like the biggest twist of the whole. It's like the whole point. I start yelling, but like, why? Mm. Why would you put that on the back? Because they were like, most people aren't going to read it and they're going to need to know this. I guess not, but I was pissed <laughs> as hell because I had to read it. I couldn't be like, oh, I know what happened. Don't have to read it now. No, I had to fucking read that pilgrim ass shit. Nathaniel Hawthorne. Oof. Yeah, and if we're going to read Nathaniel Hawthorne, let's read Goodman Brown, okay. where he goes and meets the devil in the forest. That's a much better story all the way around. Yeah, we don't necessarily do assigned reading great. Okay, mm-hmm. can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Canterbury Tales sucks. Well, that sucks whether or not you've been assigned it, I think. I Why would you an... read it if you weren't assigned if it? If you're a big loser. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, some people are big losers. You well, know. speaking of big losers, 
No, I gotta go to bed. I'm tired. Oh, you're a big loser. I am. Um, let's see. If people want to find us online, let me see if I can do it. They can find us on Twitter. Mm. They can find us on Insta. Mm. You're under Morganized Mess. We're oh under B&B Cast. Yes. They can find us on YouTube. We've got every single episode. Okay, well, except for one. Actually, there are like two or three that have no Oh, dang! Yeah, I don't understand why sometimes it's supposed to auto-upload and it just doesn't sometimes. And then once that happens, we don't know how to do it because it auto-uploads. And we're not technology geniuses. No, and also we have no thumbs! Yeah, it's hard all around, basically. They can find us on our blog, which is bnbcast.wordpress.com. Yeah, and if you're having trouble finding a place to listen to the podcast, we have our RSS feed embedded directly there. So check it out. They can find us on iTunes or any of those podcast services. All of it. And if you're in there, might as well rate and review us. I mean, don't waste the trip there. You have to click five, six buttons to get there, you know? Yeah. Make it worthwhile. Make it. And they can find you in the drug rehab clinic next Obviously. week. Obviously. Yeah. yeah, I'm going on a staycation. It's going to be By the great. way, Morgan, this isn't a podcast episode. This is an intervention. Everyone come out. Mumble, mumble, Morgan's a bitch. Mumble, mumble, Sounds mumble, like Aslan. He's <laughs> mumble over there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but really, you can catch us here next week. Yep, we'll yep. be here. We'll be on the cast. Forever and always. We love you, babies. Bye. Bye. Oh. 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 Yeah, oh. I think you just brought cancer oh. into the world. Oh, no. <laughs> you saying that into existence. Oh, no. Oh. Beauty in the bitch. Beauty in the bitch. Beauty in the bitch. Beauty in the bitch.